I guess the first one is all of the intimate moments that I've been invited into in people's lives over the years. You know, when I first left Wisconsin and drove out here for my first assignment at Shoreview United Methodist Church in San Mateo, I didn't know what was coming. Uh, there was one night not long after I arrived there uh, where I got a call in the middle of the night and uh, it was a woman who came to church every once in a while and she said, I'm at a hospital and uh, my mother is here. She doesn't have long to live and she wants to be baptized. So I got out of bed and I found the hospital and I found this hospital room filled with all kinds of people, most of whom I didn't know. And I, and I improvised the baptism and then I leaned closer to her, and she was unconscious, by the way, so I didn't know what she was picking up, and I leaned closer to her, and, and there were some words that were given to me. Uh, Go in peace, sister. One is with you now and awaits you. I don't know where those words came from, but uh, they must have been what she was waiting for because she took one more breath, and that was it. And that's just kind of typical of those intimate moments, you know, birth, death, baptism, worship, suffering of all kinds, of all kinds of people that, that I as a pastor got invited into and had a real privileged seat uh, with those people in those moments. It was a real joy. First, first of all, is the uh, fellowship with my, um, you know, with the people, with the pilgrimage fellowship and the teaching of the Word of God to the people of God. That's what I really enjoyed. And lastly, plus the preaching the Word. I love it. My greatest joy has come from being invited into people's lives at key junctures, uh, births, weddings, funerals, and everything in between. And um, I wasn't surprised about that happening with congregation members, but what really surprised me and brings me deep joy is how many homeless people I have come into relationship with through ministry and been invited to walk with those folks um, and continue to walk with them. And that really surprised me um, and brings me deep joy um, to be able to be a pastor to people who have no place to live. I would remind everybody that discovering what our, what our work is is not easy. Um, and it's not easy even if you've been in it for 40 years. Uh, what's my work? What, what's other people's work? What's God's work? How does one decide what to pick up, what to let go of? The only thing is to, for them to obey. She says it's commandment and stay in love with Jesus or God. That will help them in everything in the ministry. I think that there are as many different definitions of what your job is as a pastor as there are people in a congregation. And so my advice would be when you get to a new church, sit down with the staff parish and really flesh out a uh, very explicit job description that then gets really shared with congregation members because um, it'll keep you from overdoing. It'll, it'll keep everybody from realizing that it's not just the pastor's job to keep a church humming, it's everybody's job. And I'd like to leave you with a gift, uh, a poem that I think you can chew on. And I certainly have been chewing on this poem for many years. It's a, it was written about 800 years ago by an Islamic scholar and Sufi mystic, Rumi, and it's called The Guest House. This being human is a guest house, a new arrival every morning some momentary awareness which comes as an unexpected visitor, a joy, a sadness, a meanness. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if it's a crowd of sorrows 
who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Greet them at the door laughing. Invite them in because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Rumi. One thing is uh, I'm thinking of, uh, what about if the conference will make the uh, superintendent available once a year to come to all the churches? You know, for, for example, I've been to, to the churches for many years, but I never see the superintendent come to our church. Because our, our, I understand there's, there's a, a relationship or a bond between us and the conference. So we really need to strengthen that kind of bond whenever anyone from the main office comes, just once a year, you know, or after two years, somebody saw that. <laughs> that helped to the church, you know, motivating them and uh, encourage them, you know, in, in, in the ministry. I know that we live in a time where people are really anxious about the survival of the church. And my only thing I want to say is choose love, because if we choose love, the fear will get crowded out.